Hey guys, this is Game Cow playing Mario Golf Toastal Tour, making a whole load of noise on the bed because adjusting myself and whatnot. Uh, this is a take two, I think, at the moment. Yeah, it is take two because, um, yeah, stuff kind of happened. I'm playing on the smaller screen than I am used to at the moment because I'm back up with my parents. It's playing on my old TV. Problem is, my old TV is 4x3 aspect ratio, whereas I'm used to playing on widescreen now, and there's. It's not a huge difference, but it's a difference enough that I've been messing up all the time I've been playing so far, so yeah. And that's pretty much it. And when you're playing with Bowser, you can't really afford to mess up. But we are going to do it anyway because I did kind of say I am playing with the characters I used before. So, Cheap Cheap Star Tournament, you are going to get Bowser, and hopefully it's going to be doable, to be honest. It was, it's not, ah, it's not the worst thing ever, but you do kind of need to score pretty well on this one, so, well, you know what Bowser, Bowser's control is like, so, yeah. Which is why, well, this shot kind of goes against the wind in the offset of control, so it's okay, it's gonna land pretty much where it was intended in the first place, so that's fine. But it is going to be tricky to do, because, yeah, it's not straightforward when you are playing with a very, very low control character. You can, I mean, hit these greens with... Even people like Luigi and Yoshi can hit these greens in regulation, so for the most part, playing with Bowser doesn't actually help as much in terms of distance, because there's not very many holes that he can reach, which most characters can't. So it's pretty much just using the disadvantages of Bowser and his terrible control. I mean, look what he's already set up. This is not the sort of putt which you would like to be making for Birdie on the first hole of the second tournament, you know? But that's what kind of has to happen, and whilst it wasn't the most difficult one ever, it was sort of hard to judge, well, can I get away with just, you know, using the hill as is? Do I have to go up a putter, basically? If I had to go up to the um, mid-range putter, that would have been an extremely annoying shot to do. So, thankfully I didn't, but... Yeah, not the easiest of starts because of Boozer over here. That's just what he's like, I suppose. So long as you can get the accuracy right, though, and I mean dead center like we've got here, if you could do that pretty much every time, then Bowser is, of course, one of the best characters that you could use. Though it turns out because of the wind that was still in the rough. Never mind, not, the, not a big issue. Um, it's far enough away that I reckon this should still go perfectly fine, and yeah, we should be looking at a relatively good shot there, which is exactly what we are. That's within, yeah, a six foot, pretty nice, and it's a simple enough birdie to make. So, yeah. See, Bowser can get a lot of birdies if you are good with the shot accuracy. You've really got to be decent with your first shot, especially. Your tee shot has to be good when you're using Bowser, but... He does. Oh, why am I hitting? Uh, why do I have to hit the narrow area of this green? Why couldn't I have hit the? Uh, why couldn't I have hit over the other side? It would have been a lot easier. Damn it, game. Well, we're just gonna have to hit the perfect shot then and say screw you because yeah, I don't know if the super backspin's necessary, but I'm expecting it to bounce over. Except it didn't. Ah. Right. Okay. Bowser's shot is average in height, but because of his massive distance. Shots tend to play a lot higher than you would expect for somebody of his height. And that seems to be... <laughs> what? What? Can't even see it from there. Come on, that's a much better angle. Like... <laughs> okay, I was not expecting that to work, but fair enough. Um, yeah, Bowser's shots are a lot higher than his height would suggest because of how far they um, how far they travel. You know, his they kind of balloon a lot more than you would expect, and sometimes that makes judging wind with him much much harder than it should be. Oh well, uh, a couple of holes on this course in the back tees do do this whole stupid thing here where. Um, you're kind of screwed if you have a really high draw or fade level. And of course, Boozerman has a very high draw, so... 
He's got to play some sort of ridiculous shot here, and look at the freaking pin position there. 610 yard. This is a ridiculously long course when you're playing on the bad tees. I think we're about 70 yard back. 60, 70 yard back from where we were, and it was already a very long hole. So, this is bordering on ridiculous, and hopefully the wind is going to take this enough. Yes, I think it will. I think it um, it might actually hit the semi-rough here. Yeah, it's clipped onto the semi-rough, and that's going to make getting onto this green very hard. Because I can only use, if I want to get a decent impact meter, then I have to use a free iron, which is of course not an option if you want to get onto the green. And oh, if I do want to get onto the green, this is not going to be an easy shot to make, but it's doable, so here's hoping. Yes, okay, good. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And I reckon if that doesn't hit the tree, which it does not, this should roll. Not really, because it bounced off the hill on the fe on the fecking green fringe, but it the principle was there, and we did just about make it. That, that's this is one of the few holes where Bowser is almost necessary to get an eagle chance by getting on the green in two, you know. And this is royally screwed up. That was like the worst freaking approach ever, but you know it's going to roll straight down that hill and it's going to go in anyway. Bowser apparently is the master of chip-ins, and that is it, because it, <laughs> look at that, that is just ridiculous. Bowser, what the hell are you on? Seriously, dude, you've just gotten minus five in the first four holes. Really? Is this slight payback for last time of being really terrible on this course? Because, dude, we're atop the table after four holes, and... Considering the AI always has a massive birdie rush in the first in the front nine and then fails in the back nine, to be top of the table in four holes is kind of ridiculous to be honest. So uh, yeah, this must be like payback for last time because last time we really sucked with Bowser and this time Bowser's getting his revenge. Well to be fair, he has got a 73 yard drive increase since the last time. That was a terrible shot, come on. And the accuracy was fine, so the actual placement is okay, but losing another power shot already? Like, the whole point of me putting, my, putting the power down one unit was to protect my power shot, and then I go ahead and end up hitting my power four units below where it was supposed to be. What the hell, cow? Seriously. And this is kind of a little bit weak as well. The top spin is definitely a little bit of a panic button. It wasn't necessary, and I think that kind of screwed it up a little bit. But if I didn't hit the top spin, it might have just bounced completely ridiculously off of that hill over there. And yeah, that would have messed up even further. So, you know, whatever. Uh, this putt doesn't look that hard, but you know what it's like. If it doesn't look hard, it probably is, because that's just the way this game goes. It is off of a lot of fringe, though. You see how much I've got to hit from the fringe here? You've really got to account for that, because fringe slows down your putts quite a lot. So hit it a good deal harder, and as you can see, that only just made it. So, yeah, despite actually hitting what would have been a 30-foot thing, Granted, it's one foot uphill, but that doesn't matter that much. It it needed 30 foot to go 20, basically, because of the fringe. So yeah, oh my god, that wind is severe. Um, huh? If that was a little bit straighter, this would actually be a shot I'd go for. But I don't really trust Boozer to do this because if I miss that. <laughs> No, if I miss that, that's that's going straight in the water, and I do not want to ruin this good run so far, because this has been truly amazing. And of course, because I don't go for it, I hit the perfect shot. <laughs> I hit the shot exactly as intended, because I didn't go for the risky shot. But you know, if I had gone for it, Sod's Law would have said I wouldn't have made it. This looks like a big exaggeration, but look how high this shot is going. That shot is going to get taken so badly by the wind that this is necessary. I mean, you can see it with the animation here, or the, the 
camera angle, that's still hitting the green. Look at that. Absolutely freaking beautiful shot because of how far over I moved it. You know, that 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 is like the only reason that went as well as it did is because I moved it so far over. It looked ridiculous moving it a good 20 yard over, but because of how high his shot is, it was necessary. And we are two strokes ahead of Womp King here, that is awesome. So, definitely doing well, though the best main character at the moment is Wario. Wario is 3 under compared to our 7, he's kind of failing at the moment. Well, I mean, 3 under is a nice score, but come on, if he's the best like actual character, rather than just basic enemies and whatnot, I don't think we're really going to have to worry too much. Now, if I hit this shot absolutely perfectly, I'm going to backspin this, but if I don't, well, I'll try and leave it. It depends on what my um, reactions are like here. So hit that, and I'm still going to backspin it anyway because I overshot the thing. But unfortunately, because of the accuracy miss, it's going to bounce off of the hill in the wrong direction, and it's going to land into the fairway because, yeah, that kind of happens. This is what you get for missing your accuracy in the same direction that the hill is going, pretty much. So, we just hit that. I don't want to spin that because it's going to go in anyway. Bowser is the freaking chip-in master. Look at this, this is just... Well, I mean, it shows you a little bit of what the hills are like on this one. Or not, not just the hills, but what the green is like in general. You can see that the green is rolling a lot more than it was in the every other mode so far. And it's definitely paying off, because chip-ins can be a hell of a lot easier on this surface. They can also be quite a bit more difficult, depending, but yeah, they can be a lot easier when you don't have, um, don't have to worry so much about the ball not rolling far enough. Because, by God, it will roll far enough on this surface. Uh, the wind is also, of course, very favourable. It was favourable last time as well, but I just messed up the controls, so... Thankfully, there's a wide target to hit this time, so that is fine. Best drive, don't really care. We're probably going to hit higher than that later. 55 yard, but you see, the thing is going up hills, so I don't want to hit too much lower than that. I think I'm going to hit this, and hope that it bounces right off the hill. So, we're going to hit that. Backspin actually because it's overshot. And that turned out to be beautiful. So, yeah, truly, truly good approach. Bowser is definitely showing his approaching skill today, that is for sure. And that is something which is quite weird because Bowser doesn't usually have approaching abilities because it is terrible control. But, um, yeah, 9 under, can't really argue with that at all. Really cannot argue with that at all. So, what is the wind like here? Oh my goodness gracious me, that wind is ridiculous. Um, you know, I'm just going to hit over here and hope to god that I don't mess the control up too much. And that should be fine. The control is offset in the right direction because the wind is going to the left. My control offset goes to the right. They just about cancel each other out and it hits roughly where I was aiming in the first place. So that ends up being a good shot. And now 220 yard to get to the green. That's pretty rough, but we might be able to manage this if I am careful. I'm hitting the bottom of the ball here, so I am going to aim quite a bit further across, despite the hill, you know. And yes, we've hit the perfect shot. I probably should have backspun that, but we're going to hope it goes anyway. Look at that beautiful camera angle. That is amazing, and it's going to definitely need the backspin. I didn't really think quick enough to put the backspin in that. My god, this putt is savage. Look at that. Ugh, that is a horrendous putt here. I can't even actually get the reverse angle on this either, so I am not quite sure. Uh, well, it's all... Apart from the first bit on that fringe, all of this is going to the left. So I think I'm going to aim, but it's all downhill as well, so that's a bit more severe. I think I'm going to aim to around about here, because of the distance it's got to go, maybe to there. And then, I hope this goes! It kicked off the hill, and that was pretty bad, because it just bounced straight away, but who really cares? It's still a makeable birdie, 
It's not the easiest of birdie putts, actually. I've had much easier so far today, but it's not the worst ever, and this should go in quite comfortably, which it does. It almost stopped right at the end there. I don't know if you noticed that, but um, uh, let's get a better angle than that, Bowser. Bowser, Bowser. Yep. Watch how this slows down right at the end. That was... Okay, maybe not as extreme as it looked in the first angle, but it was still very close to just dead set stopping there, and that could have been pretty bad, because that hill nearly took it way more. My god, that is the best freaking round I've ever had so far. This is ridiculous. I mean, 10 under in the front nine. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. 10 under usually wins you this tournament. I've had one where the AI was like 12, which was pretty retarded. I think I tie won that one. Because I mean, look at this, even though we are 10 under, we've hit the best round ever in the front nine. Wiggler is still very competitive here. Minus eight is a good score, and yeah. Anyway, this slight hole four, this one also punishes you for having an extreme draw or fade, so you've got to hit this sort of ridiculous shenanigan over here, and there is no wind. That is very nice. The wind has been fairly favourable to me this time round, and I'm quite grateful for that. Oh my god, that's in the bunker! See how far over that was compared to where I aimed, because I hit a couple of bars off in the accuracy. Didn't even reach the bunkers, that's how terrible that was. Ugh, 180 yards from the rough. This is not going to be a pretty shot. It might work, I doubt it, but if I do hit this better, much better than last time, then I might actually get a good shot out of this. And I do, I hit it absolutely perfectly, there's no lie misdirection either, so this should actually end up as a really good shot. Which it does, look at that, that was beautiful. Truly, truly beautiful. Bowser, you're definitely hit and miss as we have seen so far. We've had some amazing shots, we've had some terrible ones, but yeah, you're you're kind of doing all right right now. You know, I can't really say much bad to be honest because we're just nailing like every single hole here. This is ridiculous. Um, for this one. I guess this is pretty much the idea, I'm going to super backspin this because even though I've messed up the control, I am expecting the wind to take this quite far, but it doesn't because, yeah, the control kind of put it into the rough, that was kind of dumb. Oh, look at that. That hill is ridiculous, man. That's just, no, that, that, that's not going to be very helpful for anyone involved in all of this. And the top spin was actually needed? Oh, go on, go on. No, it's not. It's not going to do the same again. It's not going to do the same again, and we have our first hole where we are not under par, which is quite something, to be honest. <laughs> to go 11, you know, to go 10 holes under par straight, and we are still that, but look, Wiggler is now at 10 under. The computer, it's rubber banded in this thing. The computer does much better when you're doing better. So the more under par you get, the more you have to actually maintain under par in order to win the tournament. It's a pretty ridiculous scenario in a way, but it, you know, it works. And we might well have to hit better than 12 under here, because I don't know if Wiggler is going to drop. I honestly think, because of how well we did in that front nine, that we're going to have to hit an exceptional back nine as well in order to make this work. Now I'm going to hit a little bit further back here because I'm so, well, I'm sort of anticipating hitting a little bit harder so that I can get my um, back spin running here. And that is what we are going to do. We have hit the perfect shot. It's slightly over in power as well, you know, the plus 1%. So, yep, going to hit the back spin. It's going to careen down here. And that was pretty sweet. Maybe you could have done with one less power unit there because it was actually back spinning uphill, but that is a good thing because it's a nice flat putt. In terms of left rightness, there was no breaks in that, it was just straight uphill. Very easy to do, and it is a very sweet birdie. So, hey, look at it, Wiggler's just birdied the last three holes in a row. So, I mean, we're only one shot ahead here. 
Granted, he's played one more hole than we have, but we're only one shot ahead, and we've hit 11 birdies, no, 10 birdies and an eagle so far. What the hell, dude? Seriously, rubber banding to the max. Definitely pushing to the absolute limit here, and my god, that wind. Um, Normally what I would do is I would chance it, although you've got to hit pretty perfect accuracy, I would normally chance this shot so I could try and get on in two, but I'm going to have to just hope that Bowser's natural power is going to be good enough here, because I don't really want to risk anything more than this. I mean, this is aiming into the same sort of area, I realise, but it's hitting the top of the ball, so the wind doesn't affect it quite as badly. And yeah, this is as much as I'm willing to risk. And even that, oh, that's going straight into bunker because the control is offset in the same direction as the wind. That's going to amplify, and yeah, straight into bunker. Doesn't matter what spin I put in that because the bounce was what took it into the bunker. Uh, can I just use the four iron here? Much friendlier on my little impact meter over there, and minus six percent. Good God. Well, it's into a nice wide area of fairway, so. It's okay, and the wind is now pretty much directly in our faces, so this is a much easier shot than the last one. Which is good. I should hopefully still be able to get on this green, and we should hopefully still be able to make some sort of bird-like object appear at the end of this, because that would be very nice, although this is undershot. Uh, bounce to the right. No, it's just gonna stick. Ah, I was kind of hoping that would bounce to the right off of the hill there because this is a bit nastier than I wanted. But maybe it's doable. I think it's doable. If you think it's doable, then it probably is. Therefore, yeah, just go ahead and do it. And hope that it goes. Did I over adjust? No, I, I kind of over recompensated or something. I don't know. Point is, it didn't work. But we still got par, so that's important. It is one of those holes that is very eagleable if the wind is in your favour, but I guess this time, yeah. And hey, Wiggler actually dropped a shot, that is good, because that means he hopefully will stop rising and stop trying to steal my first place, because seriously, dude, that's kind of rude, you probably shouldn't do that. That tree is royally in the way. Why is that? There's only one tree planted in this entire course that, you know, this entire hole which is remotely possible to be in the way and it is in the most in the way spot possible. Tree, you are a troll. Anyway, enough about the tree being a troll. I am hopefully, that was one hell of a lag spike there. I am hopefully going to not hit this into the rough, that would be nice. Uh, yep, straight on fairway, it's a pretty wide area. Normally with this sort of character type you do want to try and land in the widest possible spots. And I'm going to hit straight over that tree because I'm just that badass. I don't know, that tree is totally not going to be in the way for very much longer because we're just going to sail straight over the top of it. Look at that. Beautiful. And that actually turned out to be a very good shot as well. If I had a backspun that, it might have gone a bit closer, but knowing the sand wedge, it would have ended up all the way over here, if I was lucky. So it was better not to spin it. As I say, especially on this surface, sp sometimes no spin is better than spin at all. So don't overdo it. And yeah, we managed to get ourselves to 13 under in 14 holes. This is better than my best already, and I have 5 holes left to play. Knowing me, I've just kind of jinxed that now, but oh well. I think, with us being 4 strokes ahead and Wiggler on the descendancy, I think we are going to be okay no matter what at this point. So let's just play some good old fashion golf and miss hit our shot in the wrong direction, because why the hell not? I don't know. It turns out that's still not a terrible shot. It's not a great one because it's in the rough. I've got to play that, but you know, approaching, approaching does usually matter. But look at that freaking hill. That is ridiculous. I mean, I'm, uh, I've had that quite a lot today, where that hill has just been so so bad, and that toss spin was probably not necessary in the slightest. But you know what? I'm not that fussed. I sort of expected it to stick into the hill a bit more, that's why I did put the top spin on, but it did not. 
Doesn't make a difference though, because it's not a difficult power part, despite how it looked. And yeah, we are doing alright. Yeah, Wiggler's bogeyed the last three holes in a row. I think he's pretty much sunk at this point. So, with that said, we are just going to keep on going, and the game wants us to use a forward that would hit there. Yeah, no. It's obvious why, because the one wood doesn't quite reach here by itself, and the game doesn't factor power shots into your best shot thing. But, I mean, look at this, this is perfectly fine to hit this. Even with the slightly lower than expected power, it is still perfectly fine, and... Yeah, we are going to land comfortably into the fairway area, which is good. So long as you don't mess up both the power and the control there, you're pretty much okay. So that is fine. Um, with this one, I am going to hit the slightly lower trajectory shot, just because I'm going to backspin this. It's maybe a bad idea because I missed the accuracy, but um, yeah, that was a pretty bad idea. You can see why sometimes putting no spin is better than putting spin on it just for the sake of it. I didn't really put it on for the sake of it, it was just, you know, my reactions weren't quite there to say, oh hey, you missed the accuracy by one bar, better not put backspin on that because, you know, yeah, that that's, that's pretty much how it happens. And it doesn't matter in the end because that was a comfortable, comfortable putt, there wasn't much of a break on that and yeah. I can account for the fringe fairly well, so doing good. So this hole, uh, the wind is completely against, which is not good. This hole is interesting in the sense of, well, there's a few ways of doing it. I think Bowser actually has the option of going up here, which is interesting, but I don't know if I want to risk it because of all the trees which are around. Normally what I would try and do is I would try and hit into this little corner over here. If you can successfully stay on the fairway up in this corner then you can do a very high approach to hit up the top, basically hit to the green at 2. And this tends to be where I try and aim for, so that is what I'm going to do. I have overshot it, I think the wind should compensate for that. Hopefully the super backspin will help, so please don't stick in the rough. Yes, okay, good, good, good. Now just stop. Stop! Don't roll down the hill! Thank you. Okay, 206 yard. It's a big uphill though, and it's a fairly... It is a very tough shot. I'm not going to deny that this is not an easy shot. No, not... Not... Eh, not a tough shot to make. But it is definitely makeable, and we are going to go ahead and do that. Right now. Just watch. The control is fine, the power was pretty much as hoped, and the direction was not the best ever, but it wasn't terrible. So we're up here, you know, not on the green unfortunately, but it is still makeable, so that is good. And there we go. It's going to be a chip-in, because Bowser is the freaking master of chip-ins, as we have seen so far today, and he lands himself his second eagle of the day. Beautiful stuff, Bowser. Beautiful stuff. <laughs> this is literally just complete payback for the last time of sucking, isn't it, really? Because Bowser double bogeyed that whole last time, and now he's double on departed, if you like. Double, um, you know, single eagle thing on that one. He's gone from two over to two under. And it's on the harder setting as well, so it's like, what the hell? So, this last course does of course punish you for having a massive draw because that feckin' tree. So we're gonna have to hit this, and it's not a bad shot, it's just, yeah, it's a little bit more open for error than it should be, but it's not a bad shot, so that's fine. The wind and my offset in accuracy are both aligned, which is not the best of situations, but because of how wide the target is and how big that hill in the opposite way is, it's not a hard shot to make. So yeah, that's a fairly comfortable first one. You've just got to do a little bit of internationalism, I suppose, in the side spin. And uh, maybe that's not far enough over, actually, because even though it's only 7 meters per second, that is still quite a sharp wind, and I'm just going to completely screw the accuracy up on this. Hope you don't mind. Oh, that better not land in the water. Oh, stick! <laughs> My god, stop! Thank you! 
<laughs> oh jeez, that is just, that is way too close to a um, terrible, terrible ending on this. That would have sucked royally. Um, never mind, it did not, and this should be... What the hell just happened there? Did that just... What? That just stopped. That must have clipped the fringe or something, and yeah, just completely stuck. And this is for par. This is not an easy putt for par. Um, it's mostly because it's off the fringe, and it's got quite a bit of um, quite a bit of uh, uphillness as well. But I think it's doable with what I hit. It is so we do manage to get a par for that. Thank God for that. That last hole, man, that actually proved to be a lot harder than it should have been. Never mind, look at that, freaking 16 under, that is ridiculous. Take a look at that scorecard, that scorecard's phenomenal. Just... wow. <laughs> How many chip are on there? Um, I think about three of those were putts though, so yeah, they maybe shouldn't count, but um... Yeah, well, even at that, we'd have four chip-ins in that run, if we don't count the putting ones. So, yeah, that's that's ridiculous. Bowser, you are the master of chip, that is for sure. Does this replace Diddy's um, Peaches Course one as the best round in history, however? I, I will leave that to you guys. I think it might do, actually, but... Um, in consistency terms, no, but I think that might actually top it because of how many chip-ins and such were in that. Bowser, you did alright, man. You did alright. So, that was a worthy take two, and that is my favourite tournament done, with the tournament greens unlocked for every other mode. Sure, why the hell not? One difference between the NTSC version and this that I've noticed in this sense is that in the NTSC version you will always get the thing going, you know, and the award goes too, but you don't really for this, you only get it for certain characters, and that's kind of lame, to be honest. I don't know why they'd have taken that out. But yeah, you don't get the Andy Award goes to Bowser thing like you should do, which is dumb. Oh well. So, that was definitely round of the day, and this has been Game of Cow playing this game of Mario Golf Toadstool Tour, and join us next time when we go into Shifting Sands, I suppose, the Sand Star Classic. Why the hell not? It's going to be Peach that does that one, because Peach did the original. Don't know how it's going to go, but I think it should be okay. Peach tends to be pretty good, so yeah, join us next time for that.